Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Rockets have fascinated mankind for ages. Few things are quite as powerful as the gigantic rocket boosters that take astronauts to space. But what goes up must come down. And this is how NASA recovers gigantic rocket parts that have fallen into the sea from space. China in the 13th century. The earliest known description of rockets is recorded by historians. The Chinese military cleverly employed gunpowder-filled bamboo tubes as primitive rockets, known as fire arrows. During the Song of Dynasty, many fire arrows were launched during the Battle of Kai Kang in 1232. These early rockets created brilliant arcs of fire across the skies and terrified their adversaries. This innovative use of gunpowder not only demonstrated the inventiveness of ancient Chinese combat, but also set the foundation for the amazing developments in rocket technology that would follow centuries later, finally producing the complex rocket boosters we use today. By giving the spacecraft the required thrust to drive it throughout the first stage of its trip, boosters are absolutely vital in rockets. Usually utilized in the liftoff and ascent phases, they provide great force to counteract the gravitational pull of Earth. Often, Either liquid or solid rocket boosters have different operational qualities and benefits. Like those used on the Space Shuttle and the Artemis One, solid rocket boosters comprise a solid propellant mix that ignites to provide thrust. This basic architecture generates a lot of force and is quite dependable. While liquid rocket boosters provide more exact control over thrust and burn length, they require liquid propellants such as liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. The Falcon Heavy makes considerable use of liquid rocket boosters. The booster's purpose is entirely completed once the rocket achieves a predefined altitude and speed. They are then ejected to lighten the spaceship and increase efficiency. Carefully designed, the detaching procedure guarantees accuracy and safety. The primary engines throttle down to lessen structural tension before disconnection. To provide the required force to separate the boosters securely, small separation motors or charges are then fired to push them away from the main rocket body. A vital point in the mission is that booster separation depends on exact engineering and sequencing to ensure the spacecraft stays on its intended path. Designed precisely to guarantee simultaneous release, explosive bolts or pyrotechnic devices cut the physical links between the boosters and the rocket. After that, the guiding systems of the spacecraft change thrust and trajectory to offset mass shifts 
and preserve the intended course. As witnessed with the Space Shuttle's solid rocket boosters, which fall back to Earth and can be recovered and repaired after splashing down in the sea. What follows is the recovery process of the solid rocket boosters, SRBs of the Space Shuttle. Both boosters splash down into the Atlantic Ocean while sporting specially designed parachutes to soften their fall. From Kennedy Space Center, recovery ships Liberty Star and Freedom Star are sent to gather the SRBs from the sea. Each ship is earmarked to retrieve a specific SRB. The Liberty Star recovers the right SRB, and the Freedom Star recovers the left SRB. Once at the site where the SRBs have plunged down, divers and retrieval teams on the ships secure the floating boosters. The boosters are split up and heavy-duty cranes gently remove each section from the water. The teams make sure the sections remain unharmed throughout recovery, as any structural problems may compromise their renovation. The aft sections of the boosters, including the aft skirt, are fitted with towing lines to be towed back to the port. All segments are returned to Cape Carnival Air Force Station in Florida, especially Hangar AF. Boosters at Hangar AF first go through processing and inspection. Every segment is meticulously cleansed and any propellant still present is carefully eliminated. Once free of pollutants, they are ready for transportation. Space shuttles have been retired. In their place, we have rockets that make these spacecraft look like toys. With the Falcon Heavy able to land its rockets back on Earth, SpaceX has transformed rocket technology. Precise engine burns combined with movable grid fins that guide the three Falcon 9 first stage boosters to their intended landing spots enable this amazing achievement. To display the enormous power of the Falcon Heavy, Elon Musk launched a Tesla Roadster into space with a mannequin dubbed Starman. Now circling the sun, the automobile and its passenger highlight the rocket's capacity to carry heavy cargo far beyond Earth's orbit. Another SpaceX rocket, the Falcon 9, has proven vital in putting satellites like SAOCOM 1B into orbit. With a powerful L-band synthetic aperture radar, this Argentine Earth observation satellite offers important data for environmental studies, disaster management, and agriculture. Falcon 9's grid fins, tiny movable fins with a grid-like pattern, make exact changes to the rocket's course during descent. These fins enable SpaceX to recover and recycle the first stage boosters, therefore greatly lowering the cost of space flights. 
three Falcon 9 first stage rockets are attached to Falcon Heavy, giving us a perspective as to the sizes of these rockets. Humans are going back to the moon and eventually to Mars. Using the CST-100 Starliner Boeing capsule, the training for astronauts recovery consists of a thorough program guaranteeing the safe and effective crew member extraction upon returning to Earth. Medical experts, engineers, and support staff make up recovery teams that go through intensive training to get familiar with the capsule's systems and processes. To hone the abilities required for a quick and safe recovery operation, they run through many simulations, including nominal and off-nominal landings. Training also addresses the use of specialized tools, like medical facilities and inflatable boats, to provide the astronauts with quick support upon landing. Joint drills between the U.S. Navy and NASA underway recovery tests help personnel and spacecraft be recovered following ocean landings. To find, protect, and recover the spacecraft, these experiments call on San Antonio-class amphibious assault ships, helicopters such as Seahawks, and small craft such as Zodiacs and rigid hull inflatable boats. To guarantee safe and effective operations, explosive ordnance disposal troops and sailors train in tandem with NASA staff. The tests assess methods, tools, and systems to manage several recovery situations. The Navy is a perfect partner for NASA with its advanced capabilities. Medical facilities and three-dimensional air search radar, among other things. Future crewed lunar missions depend on these tests to guarantee safety and preparedness. When something goes wrong on the launch pad, the crew and technicians need a quick way to escape. Slidewire baskets offer an escape from the 195-foot level at Launch Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Astronauts and other staff have a way off the launch tower rapidly. These slide wires have baskets that take technicians and crew 1,200 feet away from the tower. There is room for three people in each basket. The baskets move down the wire at about 55 miles per hour and stop when they hit a catch net or a pull chain. Escaping from a launch vehicle is a completely different matter. For example, Blue Origin performed a successful pad escape test. For the test, a pusher escape motor was used to launch a full-size suborbital crew capsule from a model of the propulsion module. The goal of this process is to make sure that the capsule can quickly and safely separate from the launch truck if something goes wrong. From there, the capsule came safely down to the ground with the help of three special parachutes. From the moment Sputnik was sent into orbit in 1957 until today, the Space Shuttle program has been discontinued and we have seen SpaceX construct the biggest rockets ever.
Mankind focuses on the Moon and Mars. But these preparations require large-scale testing and massive budgets. A Saturn V rocket was what put Neil Armstrong on the moon, and the capsule brought the crew back with an ocean splashdown. Our next manned missions will once again see men and women splash down in the ocean, but the rockets taking them to space will be astronomical in size. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.